Imagine a world where the moon is masculine, a girl is neuter, and a table is feminine. Welcome to the German language. In this fascinating linguistic landscape, objects, ideas, and even people are assigned genders in ways that might seem quite peculiar to those of us accustomed to English. Unlike English, where gender is typically associated only with living things, in German, every noun gets a gender. And these aren't always what you might expect. For instance, the German word for moon, der Mond, is masculine, while Dyson, the sun, is feminine. And here's a real curveball. Das Mädchen, the word for girl, is neuter. And let's not forget der Tisch, the table, which is masculine. This isn't about biology or real-world genders, but rather an intrinsic part of the German language's structure. It's one of those quirks that make it so rich, so diverse, and so intriguing. Isn't it fascinating how language can shape our perception of the world? In German, there are three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter. This is a concept that might seem a bit peculiar to English speakers, as English nouns are not typically accompanied by a gender. But in German, gender is a fundamental part of the language, and each noun is assigned to one of these three categories. Let's start with masculine nouns. These are often, but not always, associated with male beings or entities, for example, the word for man in German is man, and it's masculine. The definite article for masculine nouns is der, so the man would be der Mann. Moving on to feminine nouns, these are frequently, yet not exclusively, linked to female beings or entities. For instance, the German word for woman is Frau, which is a feminine noun. The definite article for feminine nouns is die, thus the woman becomes die Frau. Lastly, we have neuter nouns. These can represent a variety of concepts from inanimate objects to abstract ideas and even some living beings. Take, for instance, the German word for child, which is kind. Despite the fact that a child can be either male or female, the word kind is neuter in German. The definite article for neuter nouns is das, making the child translate to das kind. So we have der Mann, die Frau, and das kind. It's important to note that the gender of a noun in German doesn't always align with the biological gender of what it represents. For example, das Mädchen, meaning the girl, is a neuter noun, not a feminine one. This is one of the many quirks that make the German language so fascinating, and at times a bit challenging. So the first step in understanding German gender assignment is to remember these three definite articles, der, die, and das. But don't worry, with a bit of practice and patience, you'll start to get the hang of it. After all, language learning is a journey, and every step brings you closer to fluency. Now let's delve into the rules that govern gender assignment in German. You might be wondering, how do we know which gender to assign to a noun in German? Well, it's often based on three factors. The ending of the noun, the noun's meaning, or the noun's origin. Let's break these down. Firstly, the ending of a noun can often hint at its gender. For instance, nouns ending in ung, height, kit, shaft, or ion, are usually feminine. Take die Freundschaft, meaning friendship, or die nation, meaning nation. Both end in shaft and ion respectively and are feminine. Similarly, nouns ending in er, l, and n are typically masculine. For example, der Lehrer, the teacher, or der Löffel, the spoon. Then we have nouns ending in chen, or line. These endings are diminutive, meaning they make the noun smaller or more endearing. And here's the fun part. All diminutive nouns are neuter, regardless of the gender of their base noun. So, das Madchen, the girl, and das Mannlein, little man, are both neuter. Moving on to the noun's meaning. Some categories of nouns are usually assigned a specific gender. For instance, days of the week, months, seasons, and points of the compass are masculine. So we say der Montag, Monday, de Januar, January, de Sommer, Summer, and de Norden, the North. In contrast, most nouns referring to flowers are feminine. So, die Rose, the Rose, and die Tulpe, the Tulip, are feminine. Lastly, the origin of a noun can also influence its gender. Foreign words that have been integrated into German often retain their original gender. For instance, das Restaurant, a word borrowed from French, is neuter in German just as it is in French. But here's a word of caution. These rules have a lot of exceptions. You might encounter a noun ending in ung that isn't feminine, or a flower that isn't referred to as feminine. 
For instance, der Sprung, the jump, is masculine, not feminine. And der Cactus, the cactus, is masculine, not feminine. That's why it's important to learn nouns along with their definite articles, der, die, or das, which signify their gender. This will help you more accurately identify the gender of a noun, even when it doesn't follow the usual rules. Remember, these rules are not absolute, and there are many exceptions, but they provide a good starting point for understanding German gender assignment. So keep practicing, and soon enough, you'll find yourself navigating the seas of German gender with ease and confidence. As with any language, German has its fair share of exceptions to the rules. Now that we've covered the basic rules of gender assignment in German, it's time to delve into those tricky exceptions that often leave language learners scratching their heads. First, let's talk about noun endings. While many noun endings are generally associated with a certain gender, there are exceptions. For example, nouns ending in chen or line are typically neuter, like madchen, girl, or fräulein, miss. But don't forget about der Hase, the hair, which is masculine despite ending in e, a predominantly feminine ending. Next, we have words that change gender based on their meaning. A classic example is der See and die See. When used to mean lake, it's masculine, but when it refers to the sea, it's feminine. So context is key. Then there are borrowed words from other languages. These words often retain the gender of their original language, which can lead to exceptions. For example, das Restaurant is neuter, following the French gender, not the typical ant ending, which would usually be masculine in German. Lastly, we have compound nouns. The gender of a compound noun is determined by the final component of the word. For example, der Lebenslauf, resume, is masculine because der Lauf, the run, is the last component, and it's masculine. These exceptions might seem daunting at first, but here's a word of comfort. They're exceptions, not the norm. They might not make sense at first glance, but they're part of what makes German such a rich and fascinating language to learn. It's worth noting that these exceptions often have to be learned by rote, so don't shy away from a little memorization. Remember, it's okay to make mistakes. It's part of the learning process. The more you practice, the more you'll start to get a feel for which gender to use, even when the rules don't apply. Don't be discouraged by these exceptions. With practice, you'll start to get a feel for which gender to use. Let's recap what we've learned about gender assignment in German. We've covered the three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter. Each of these genders has its own article, der, die, and das respectively. The gender of a noun is not always related to the physical gender of the object or person it represents. Instead, it's a grammatical feature of the language. We also took a deep dive into the rules of gender assignment. You learned that many masculine nouns end in a uh, ling or ismus while many feminine nouns end in ung, shaft, or height. Neuter nouns often end in chen, line, or um. These patterns can provide helpful clues when you're unsure of a noun's gender. But remember, there are always exceptions to these rules. Some nouns don't follow the patterns we've outlined. For example, das Madchen, the girl, is neuter, not feminine. Der Kasse, the cheese, is masculine, not neuter. These exceptions are part of what makes learning German a fascinating challenge. Now, let's talk about some practical tips for mastering this element of the language. One effective method is using color-coded flashcards. Assign a color to each gender, maybe blue for masculine, red for feminine, and green for neuter. When you study, the colors will help your brain make associations between the genders and the nouns. Another strategy is to associate each gender with an image. For instance, imagine a strong muscular figure for masculine nouns, a graceful dancer for feminine nouns, and a neutral robot for neuter nouns. This can be a fun and imaginative way to remember the genders. In the end, the key to learning the genders in German is practice and repetition. It might seem overwhelming at first, but don't worry. With time and regular practice, it will start to become second nature. Mastering gender assignment in German might seem daunting at first, but with persistence and these handy tips, you'll be on your way to fluency in no time.